I'm here with Anthony and Cameron from Ghost Aero. Can you tell me what it is you guys do? Well, we're a paranormal research team. We go around uh, different locations around Ireland, uh, soon enough, hopefully, worldwide. Uh, we seek uh, the truth with the history, um, which may be, we might know bits of the history there, but we try and link off it or uh, to it. Uh, some locations we go to, historical locations, um, we might know the history, so we try and ask specific questions, detailed questions, do detailed experiments, and try and see if there's any significance towards uh, the afterlife. Now we go in the frame of mind that we know that a location is haunted, we already know that there's uh, an afterlife, so that beats one problem that we go in knowing that there is, and so it makes it easier for any uh, energies in the other realm to come forward and talk to us. Um, so we lead off any kind of bits of history that is known and we try and find out if there's anything that isn't known or may link to some hidden bits of history, the owners or uh, multimedia or libraries, text might know. We can come back to that then as well. So you use scientific equipment when you're you're doing your investigations. Could you tell me a bit about that? Uh, well, we use uh, visually. We use uh, night vision cameras, uh, which is infrared. So we're able to see uh, people, objects, the areas of the rooms or the locations we're working in without us seeing them ourselves um, with our own vision. Uh, we use full spectrum cameras, which are like uh, ultraviolet and infrared, so we can. The either scale of the human uh, visual spectrum to see if we can see if there's any uh, any spirits that we might be able to catch visually. Now it's very difficult. I, I would say it's very like looking at probably less than one percent chance of seeing something like that um, because the human eye, the color spectrum that we see is very short compared to what we could actually see. Um, we use uh, audio. Um, equipment so we use um, which is mainly we listen out for EVPs which is electronic voice phenomenon so we listen out for knocks voices sighs breathing um, sentences that maybe spirits might be able to say it's like fishing at the end of the investigation that's when actually more detail we have to go into and look into more uh, analyze more into what is uh, a reply or uh, a comment has been said by a spirit. So um, we go we go more into detail at the end of the investigation. Um, so we use different types of temperature gauges, um, uh, measuring temperatures, thermal imaging cameras, measuring um, heat within a person or surroundings, which you can't see uh, visually. Uh, we use um, Spiritual equipment like pendulums, uh, dowsing rods, which would be the uh, type of dowsing, divination, uh, scrying, looking into mirrors, um, automatic writing, which is um, likely having your hand over a pen and likely draw to see what spirit's supposed to control your body, uh, maybe the central nervous system, and try and control and see what uh, pattern it can make or symbol. Um, we do a Ouija board, we're probably one of the only teams that do it on it. We are the only team in Ireland that do it on a consistent level. So we have a set number of questions where we ask specific um, uh, uh, questions to see if the spirit can come forward. Now we're in diff different locations, we ask specific uh, type of spirit to come forward. So I would say if it was a workhouse, we ask for people in authority to come forward, then we might come later to the people, the paupers, that may have worked at the location. So we ask them to come forward first and then block out those that we want uh, don't want to come forward, but we'll come back to them later. Um, we use all types of weird gadgets. We do all types of weird experiments. Um, next one, next investigation, we might be, be submerged in water. So. <laughs> so it might be a bit different there. We've been hanging upside down <laughs> uh, and uh, shocking ourselves recently. So. <laughs> Um, we do all types of weird experiments, but uh, mainly, uh, mainly the experiments have a link towards more detail 
are linked to us as a person, as a human being, towards the afterlife, or linked towards the history. Uh, like one uh, experiment we use is occupation cards, which is uh, different um, uh, jobs, uh, old jobs in uh, medieval wording, but uh, medieval uh, meaning. So we use uh, which have pictures of different trades, so we see what kind of trade the spirit was, what they, what what types of uh, trades happened in the location. Uh, what type of trade was most profitable, most dangerous? So we find out more detail about the what happened at the location. So, in terms of of evidence, what have you found in terms of like sounds and pictures and um, pictures? We uh, probably like during an investigation, we go in believing and all that so we remain we can be skeptic after investigation that's when we look back on pictures audio and visual footage there we pictures i wouldn't say we've caught real concrete evidence there but you know a normal person walking down the road could be a ghost we don't know what kind of makeup or um uh genetic makeup a, a ghost is there um we we found out more um recently that um we're, that we we've getting more a lot more uh voices coming over maybe it's because we're doing it a specific way that we're asking for certain spirits to come forward we're doing it in a right mental frame of mind um clearing our heads um, um and asking the proper questions makes and before we meet up for an investigation, we go through a slight line of questions that might be uh, significant to the place. So um, I don't think we've seen them. We've definitely heard them. Um, sometimes we smell them or taste them, or we definitely feel them. Like we would, like you get the certain smells that might come in. That's very rare. Um, you get the feelings of touches and all that there, like. Um, we do do the Ouija board. Um, you know, people say there some teams around Ireland are now blindfolding uh, participants to see if it works. But then again, um, I think the spirit needs to use your eyes to see the movement of the glass or to come forward. Um, we're thinking it that way anyway. Cameron might have another different view. Different team members might have a different point of view there. But um, like batteries needed for scientific purposes, um, if if you want to go and use uh, a meter, a temperature gauge, or a K2 meter, which is an EMF meter, without any batteries, um, that'd be just the same as you being blindfolded using a Ouija board. So if a ghost can manipulate you through um, eyes being blindfolded, then it can manipulate batteries not being in a meter. But um, I'd say uh, we're getting. I wouldn't say closer. In some ways, I'm glad that we don't find them. Because <laughs> if we did meet a, uh, a ghost tomorrow, then um, then I suppose if there was a big uh, uh, world find that we can see ghosts and or there's some way that we can speak to them or see them more and more like us, then the job of ghost hunting is God. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. So what is what has been your scariest experience or the scariest place, place you've been to while you've been ghost hunting? Um, I suppose the scariest place. Um, I want scariest place. I'll probably like we did uh, an exorcism, <laughs> which is this the first time I met it to the media there a few years ago there um, that we've um, done an exorcism there, and I think we did the exorcism wasn't a good idea and we learned from that there. Um, that was kind of a hairy moment because we were knowing that the people that were living at the house were wanting the spirit to leave. So we went about the exorcism, doing all the kind of rituals that would we normally associate with an exorcism. Um, you could feel the air it was it was very weird in the house, and uh, you could hear um, weird uh, croaking voices there. Uh, one of the ex team members went and attacked me, uh, so he was apparently taken over. So, uh, but at the end of it, there, just uh, after everybody calmed down, relaxed, and it was the end of the evening, 
and the so-called ritual was done. But it was talking to the owners of the property that we actually found out more answers uh, to why the haunting was happening. So what we believe now, uh, mostly with ghosts there, is that no, we don't believe in exorcisms. We don't believe that anyone has the right to move somebody on. Um, we found out later with that house there, where it was the person that needed to change their life. That was the main uh, reason for the ha haunting, and that um, just by simply talking to him, uh, that everything was mended, and we uh, uh, said really in deepest way, sorry to whatever spirits were there. Um, but the place felt a lot lighter afterwards then. Um, so I wouldn't believe, I say exorcisms uh, to do with films, religion mainly, um, just one way of scaring people um, into what's out there, like demons, I won't believe in demons. I know we haven't had any cases with demons, um, mainly due to, because I think it's to do with religion. And we were told one investigation, that we have one experiment called Manifestation Board, we have different types of uh, categories on a board, like demonic, poltergeist, doppelganger, um, fairy and it went to that it said that we were demons and this was up on the high fort a high mound and the um, well you we think that would be scary that we thought we were demons but in old uh, pagan times they were deities demons uh, that word demon that isn't actually scary it means to distribute so it's an old Greek word and so it was the Romans who brought it over as being a bad word and that's how we still go into the old Roman Catholic ways of thinking demons are there when really it's uh, people that have to change their life around the spiritual world. So, uh, what, else? what was the question? <laughs> or experience? Uh, experience. Uh, so, no, uh, that was uh, probably the scariest experience. Um, scariest place? Um, probably not. The more, the more locations we do, the more if we got the, if something really big happened. A location like somebody collapsing which has happened um, it gets us more interested actually gets us more energized and happy because <laughs> something uh, it's getting it's cool like so we're more of a we're very inactive team we keep our feet on the go and we keep on um, we're a very energetic team I would say there compared to what other teams would be around Ireland we uh, go from experiment to experiment and we try and get into the uh, the mind of what the spirit is, um, so we go about it that way. So, what is your what is your understanding of the supernatural? What are these things that are manifesting themselves? Are they dead people? Um, is well, there, are there you don't believe in demons? Are, is there evil spirits? Um, I say it's the way. I don't think there is evil spirits. I think there is spirits that may be going about their own way they might uh, like be called residual spirits they might be stuck in a trauma situation it could be a trauma it could be it could be a uh, happiness um, state of mind that they're going through it could be uh, a situation where they are evolving around themselves in their own particular space uh, I, don't, um, I don't think um, well I think myself Anthony I think that um, there is another realm there is another dimension I don't I, I don't necessarily believe in heaven and hell I do believe there's another area in our universe there that might be a heaven or or I don't know, there might be a heaven or a place where they may be able to go to when you die a higher uh, level which is probably probably which coincide with uh, NDA uh, NDEs near death experiences where people or uh, experience floating and being brought back onto the land um, or when people are astral traveling through their mind dreaming and they're seeing a cord connected to their belly button and they're being brought back again they can't go as far if they went and that far to go into this other uh, place in space um, but um, I do think there's another realm there like recently was, uh, my own theory is that uh, the reason why we see spirits or hear them at night is because there's uh, three dimensions left width and the fourth dimension is time which is measured by speed and distance and so speed and distance you get light years but the further you go away that's how, how far, that's how far we've got to the fourth dimension 
So light years, we're told to go towards the light by Jesus. Um, light um, absorbs energy. Oh, sorry, light, uh, white light um, uh, reflects it back. So you don't get the energy. So the darkness, the blackness absorbs it. And um, so that's how we get more um, supernatural things happening in the darkness or nighttime. Um, that's my theory anyway. We're told to go towards the light speed up time to so speed it up and if we just slow time down and ask for the spirits to step out the light and into the shadows that's a bit different frame of question that we might actually on which I think we are getting more different answers and what do you think that they want from us is there something we can do for these spirits um, what we can do for them I think we can just understand them more and uh, put our beliefs, religious beliefs, uh, to the side and just think where they are. Uh, uh, Do you think they're trapped in some way? I don't think they're trapped there. I think if I was in a location there and I was fond of a, a bar or a nightclub that I skipped in <laughs> recently, <laughs> and I was being told that I was an evil spirit just because I was doing what I, I would love doing. I hope that happens to everybody when they, when they pass on, that they can go back to locations that are not just stuck in front of the God or deity, and that's it, that they do actually have, can go on holidays or go to the bar and watch just soccer or football or rugby. So I think there's a lot more that we, 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 we're just not open-minded to what maybe a spirit could actually do. Like there's certain questions we've asked on investigations there and the spirit goes about a daily life is actually we ask them how are they doing today, what have they been doing today and what they're doing later. And it's a lot a lot of stuff comes out of it there, what what we get in the response. So uh, as entrapped um well some of them might be we might need to lead them into the right direction, offer them the right way just to tell them to go uh, where they're supposed to go go where um, where their loved ones are but then again they might not have loved ones but to go where they um, they don't feel to uh, leave away the sadness and go somewhere else where they can find an enlightenment and joy so uh, hopefully our spirit guides which we talk to there on a regular basis teach uh, tells them the right pathway to take what's what is your what is what is your motivation I mean did you were you always a believer in the supernatural um, How did you get involved, and what what do you get out of it? What um, um, well, I suppose it's satisfaction just, you get from it. Uh, I suppose it's just the excitement of going around the country and seeing these different uh, bits of history, different time periods in Ireland's history. Um, uh, I got the way I got involved in it. There was probably my dad telling ghost stories when I was younger, so the old social way of uh, uh, ghost stories, talking about it, and then. The, Probably the TV shows in the last decade there, Most Haunted, probably just seeks an interest in it there. But um, I don't watch, we, I don't think none of the team watch programs like that anymore. So that's why we're not not following, we're not uh, dedicated that sort of method of uh, paranormal research. So we actually got more of an open mind. Um, none of us are doctors, but then again, if we were doctors, we've been told. A certain, we'd be told and led a certain way which we should take which is kind of uh, another <laughs> that's why we <laughs> we haven't got degrees in it there which is kind of handy as well because we've got our own theories and what stuff happens there but um yeah uh, just i suppose we kalani's a brilliant place there where you can go off in a, into the woods <laughs> in a quiet end of the night and just uh, relax and just listen out there. It's a uh, beautiful place, Ireland, for locations to visit and just uh, chill out and relax and soak up the history, which probably brings a bit of the excitement, which is probably how it happened centuries ago with Halloween and that people got interested in sowing and all that uh, spiritual way of uh, celebrating. Okay, Cameron, can you tell me how you got involved with Ghost Era? Um, and initially, um, I first got involved was uh, I was doing a bit of writing myself before I knew of, of Ghost Era, and uh, I knew Anthony before from uh, rugby and in school and stuff, and uh, just messaged him and told him I was doing a bit of writing about the paranormal and ghost stories, local ghost stories, history, and that kind of thing, and he invited me down to uh, Ross Castle in Killarney, and we. Um, 
went through all the stuff with me and to kind of try and hit me for what I was writing and spent a couple of hours at it and then a few months later he got in touch with me asking me would I like to come along and I went along and I, and I really enjoyed it and, and since then I've been I've been at it now so it's been nearly but nearly three years I've been doing it with a with ghost era. So And what what has been your scariest experience? My scariest experience. I've never been particularly scared at any stage, I must I must admit. Um it's more it's more of a thrill, a kind of adrenaline rush than anything in the early days when I was with the team I was new to it, um we visited Loftus Hall in uh, Wexford there on the loop head and uh new to it I didn't understand or thought I understood it as much as I do now so it was slightly different then and to go with the stories I have there of the the devil and that kind of thing and when I was there I got involved with one of the the lone vigils so I was actually separated from the group on purpose on my own in a room and it was uh it's when I'm the first time being alone in, in a place like that and that, that was where I had the biggest thrill since I've been doing it there was nothing particularly outstanding happened there was a few noises in the room and stuff but just being new to it before I understood what was going on it was it was, it was quite it's quite scary there so not no I've been there but I've been back there since and it's half as bad <laughs> but I'm a bit more experienced now so it's it's a lot easier so you were saying you you believe in in the kind of the science of the paranormal could you explain a bit more about that sure yeah and um, what I, I, I believe it is it's a science um, like the other sciences we have on earth i believe that what what it is is that these are energies of former living people and that have, for whatever reason haven't haven't um, moved on they haven't um, dissipated energy is still there it's still um it's still intelligent energy after the person dies and i believe that they live on the same plane of reality as we do they're living amongst us, and I just don't think that we're able to see them for whatever reason. So I don't believe that they're from another dimension or there are other dimensions. I believe that they're amongst us, and always are, always will be. And for whatever reason, um, we don't know yet. There hasn't been enough scientific research into what it is and, and how it works. So it's just, it's just one of those things that I think maybe another 100 years, maybe 200 years, it might be a bit more understood. Um, but you know, if, if you ask someone a couple of hundred years ago about the science that we know now, they'd be just as baffling for them to understand about you know things like medical research and stuff. For what for what we know, what we may find out about the paranormal in the future, could be a similar kind of contrast. You know, so that's what, I, that's what I, think, I think it is. It's just it's just part of this world. It's just a natural thing, an, an energy thing. But is it something that um, makes you optimistic or? Or, or pessimistic. I mean, when you think when you die, are you worried about what's going to happen to you? Not particularly. No, I think I think I think it, the, the energy that do stay around, I think, is for a reason. I think it's 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 a, a mental reason. Um, something that you do on purpose. Maybe you're being held here for a reason. You, you didn't fulfil something, or you didn't do something you wanted to do, or you're afraid to move on, or whatever. I think so somehow, some somehow, it works that you're just able to stay where you are. And, and go about your uh, your life until your the energy that you're created from uh, dies out, and then I, I think that you cease to you cease to exist after that. But for whatever reason, these these energies are all around. They're able to draw off energies. I think as well in the world, like energies from from humans, energies from electronics, you know, electrical things, that kind of stuff. Um, and that they do hang around for they have their own reasons, obviously, and, and they just they do that for so long until until they or they get fed up with it or Again, it's all theoretical. I don't. Well, this isn't true either. But this is that's what that's what I think it is. I think it's a natural thing. It's part of this world that we just don't understand yet. And that I think eventually we will become to understand it. And I think the reason we don't understand it now is that it, there's not enough credible evidence um, to understand it. There's, it's all theoretical at the moment. That we don't have the technology, say, to be able to see or to be able to like, have physical evidence of them. I think. That it's just something that's going to come in a, in, a, in a long, long time away, but it will come eventually. And do you think there's anything we can do for these spirits that are trapped? Is there? Any, do they want something from us? I, I think some of them would. Uh, they like uh, to talk to us. Perhaps some of them don't. I think some of them don't like talking to us at all. When we get that, when we go to some places, particularly religious, religious places, we'll say the energies there don't like communicating with us. Sometimes they just ignore us. Sometimes they try and uh, try and ignore us. Sometimes they um, try and mess with us, so to speak. I think that's because, from a religious perspective, the, what we do would be a taboo issue. 
and that's why that happens. Um, generally, most most energies and um, they they want to talk, want to speak to us, and sometimes they they they, they approach you and they say we've met, we've a message for you, we we want to talk to you, and they're actually more inclined to make a stay with them when we're doing it for whatever reason. Maybe they they died or they were alive and they were they had a sad life or they were lonely or something and. They want the company. I'm not particularly sure, but you do. You have, you have different. You have people that do want to talk to you. People that don't want to talk to you. I think it's just like another. It's just like they're walking around their everyday life, and we just can't see them. And they're the same as us. They good days, bad days, that kind of thing. And sometimes they just don't want to get involved. And sometimes they do. And it's much, much like we do. Sometimes you don't want to talk to your, you know, your, your mistress or your your aunt or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're, they're still there. So. <laughs> And did, did you come into the group as a believer, or were you? Did you come in with an open mind and say, I, "Let me see what we're going to find, and then I'll see what I believe"? I've, although I've always been open-minded, I understood a lot about it before I actually joined the group. And then a lot of uh, personal, I read a lot. I studied, I studied English there in college, and and literature, and it's, it's one of the things that came across years ago that interested me, and I just just read about it, read about it, and read about it. And that's why. I think I wanted to write about it, in particular paranormal and ghost stories and stuff, which obviously got me in, in contact with Anthony there. But uh, it's since I joined the group, I've learned a lot more about um, the spiritual side of it and the hands-on side of it. Before it was just knowledge from books, just out of pure, just out of pure interest. I read a lot, I read a lot about a lot of things, and that's one of the things that I became really interested in. And and once I started doing it, so I just haven't stopped since though. So it's been nearly three years and going strong. You know, particularly when I do do it, the most interesting thing for me is the, the historical side of it. Um, it's it's interesting to know something about a place you're going to, um, and going there and communicating with someone, and receiving answers from them that actually correspond with the history that you have knowledge of from a book. You know, that's that's what that's what really does it for that does it for me. It's not so much the contact. I mean, we expect the contact at this stage. I'm used to it. Expect to actually talk to someone. It's it's the evidence that if like it proves that the person or the energy we're talking to is intelligent. You know, it's it's telling me something that I'm after reading in a book. That's that's historical fact. You know, so that's that's what does it for me is when we find corresponding answers and into what we're looking into. But how 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 is that not scary though? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe it was, it was scary at the start. Um, it's just you know, the way I see it is it's just an, it's a natural thing. It's not it's not a bad thing. Um, it's, it's it's kind of a genuine adrenaline rush. Um, like you might say to a guy that's bungee jumping that you know that's scary, but he's done it so many times. It's just the adrenaline adrenaline rush now for him to jump off the bridge or whatever. You know, so it's the way it is for me at the moment. <laughs> it's interesting. It's just a it's an intellectual thing. So. So is there anything that the two of you would like to jump in on, or anything we haven't covered? Or? I'd, 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 I'd encourage people to, to get involved in it, not so much take it up as a, as a pastime or anything, but actually be a bit more open-minded towards it. Um, a lot of people still think, particularly in Ireland with the, the whole Catholic Church uh, side of it. I'm not a religious person myself, I was obviously when I was younger, but I've kind of moved away from that now and I wouldn't consider myself religious at all. A lot of people, friends and all, family that I would speak to about it, they'd be afraid of it because like, it's some kind of evil thing. And I don't believe there is um, there is like demons and all this evil stuff that goes with it. I, I believe that you have good and you have bad energies, like positive, negative. Like you, a good person in life is going to be a, a good energy, a good um, energy when they pass over, or a, a bad person is... Could have been negative or mischievous when they pass over. I don't believe that there are evil demons and all this kind of stuff. I don't think that exists. Um, I've never been given reason to think that that would exist either in over the years of doing it. So I've just encouraged people to, if you ever get the opportunity to get involved in it, give it a go because it's it's really interesting. Should I give the details to the website or? You can do, yeah. So uh, Ghost Era can be found on www.ghostera.net. We're also on Facebook as Ghost Era and on Twitter as Ghost Era Paranormal. We do have a YouTube channel, we have a few uh, uh, videos up, but most of our footage and our investigation stuff will be put into books. And uh, we have a book out at the moment called The Rising of Haunted Ireland, which is 13 locations around Ireland 
from a DVD, uh, 90 minutes DVD clips of the, uh, the 12 loca 13 locations. And uh, so we've got covers places like um, Dungara Castle in County Galway, uh, Hook Head Lighthouse in Wexford, uh, Whitlow Jail in Whitlow.